According to an old Japanese proverb, the nail that sticks out will be hammered down. A woman named Junko Tabe did not see it this way. She prided herself on being a woman who would not be held back by others' expectations or societal rules. This individuality and personal strength led Tabe to become the first woman to summit Mount Everest. Junko Tabe was a trailblazer in the mountaineering community who broke social and economic barriers, inspiring the next generation of fierce women and climbers with her perseverance, despite restricting financial situations and rigid societal standards which pegged women as merely homemakers. With its 189 km per hour winds and freezing temperatures dropping to negative 163 degrees, Everest proves to be no easy feat for climbers. The slippery ice and constant avalanches, not to mention treacherous chasms, have caused numerous deaths and make the mountain attemptable to less than half of mountaineers. The initial summit in 1953 by Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay was unheard of, and after 22 years, only 73 others reached the peak, all of which were men. After all, the advanced techniques and fitness required for the trek were seen as far too difficult for a woman. But when Junko Tabe became the 76th person and first woman to reach the top in 1975, despite her gender and small stature, that theory dissipated. Tabe's tough, persistent character was necessary for summiting Everest especially due to the Japanese societal expectations of women remaining in the home. In Japan, it was hugely inspiring. Very much a culture where you had men working and women staying at home. I mean, that was the 70s. You were seeing a, you know, kind of this early transformation of women getting into the workforce. I would imagine that um, if I was a woman in that culture, it would be pretty inspiring to me to see not only that she was the first woman, but that she was surrounded by women. The mountaineering community was especially difficult for women to break into because of the belief that women were weak and would cause a trip to fail. There wasn't a lot of history, uh, uh, or a lot, yeah, a lot of history of women climbing uh, 8,000 meter peaks yet, and what little there was really didn't do women a good service. Uh, they were considered as uh, or d disruptive to the team dynamics, and so as if I am a temperance. Tabe attempted to resolve this issue by creating a team of exclusively women. However, this team would face difficulty in receiving funding as a result of the stigmas held by Japanese society. The Japanese women's expedition was uh, amazing because they have very little funding. I mean, if you look at it, it was a very grassroots from making their own equipment to importing down uh, feathers to make their own sleeping bags to having kids save jelly packs. They also struggled to get a permit for the mountain because permitting was highly restricted before 1986. This is because most people were accepted based on skill, and the expertise of women was not acknowledged as much as that of men. Nonetheless, Tabe and her team were given permission to go up the mountain after their extraordinary fundraising and persistent effort. The group rigorously trained for months on end before leaving for the expedition in early 1975. Once they began the ascent, they were taken aback by the beauty of the mountain. However, on May 4, 1975, a massive avalanche struck Mount Everest, burying the team of 15 women and six Sherpas in the freezing cold ice. Tabe fell unconscious for approximately six minutes until a brave Sherpa dug her out of the numbing snowbank. In this time, she remembers thinking of her young child left behind at home with her husband. Despite this catastrophe, the team was able to continue with no casualties, though most of their oxygen reserve was depleted. Their next harrowing experience came when they reached a ridge of ice that was said to be as thin as the blade of a knife. In order to cross this, Tabe was forced to lay her body against the frigid ice and pull herself along. 
All members of the team successfully made it across, but Tabe was enraged that the previous climbers' accounts contained no warning of this unexpected hazard. When it came time to finish the trek up the mountain, members came to consensus that Tabe should be the first one to summit, since only one of them would be able to reach the top due to the restricted supply of oxygen. On May 16th, a mere 12 days after the avalanche struck, Junko Tabe broke barriers in Japanese society as well as the mountaineering community by reaching the top of Mount Everest, proving that women were just as valuable as men. In fact, Tabe and her team of courageous women took the same route that Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay took in 1953. Yet when she returned, she still faced many anti-feminist remarks, including a cartoon published by Frank Interlandi four days after her accomplishment that featured a corset on Everest to symbolize the belief that women were unfit for mountaineering. However, Tabe was backed up by fellow women who felt empowered by her feet, with one reader stating, doesn't Interlandi realize there are some women who want to conquer other things besides their waistlines? Despite her upbringing in a society that praised men as the adventurers and climbers and women as the quiet mothers, Tabe followed her passions and by doing so, inspired many. While she valued family and modestly referred to herself as a wife and mother, she found her calling in climbing mountains and ensured she could pursue it. Regardless of judgment, lack of funding, and having to leave her family for extended periods of time, Tabe made sacrifices and endured challenges that were a testament to her strong will. Her perseverance to climb the seven summits and countless other peaks has motivated other women to pursue their passions in mountaineering and beyond. Sharon Wood, for example, followed in Tabe's steps to become the first North American woman to climb Everest and has since become a motivational speaker promoting manifesting one's destiny. And I also realized that it's, it's not what we do that defines us, it's how we do what we do that defines us. Her determination to kindle the curiosity of the youth and mountaineering shows in her numerous expeditions with school children up mountains up until the end of her life. Junko Tabe's legacy inspires the next generation of women to pursue their dreams even in the face of challenges, encouraging them to break their own barriers. In addition to her accomplishments as a climber, Tabe made staggering differences in her later life through the Himalayan Adventure Trust of Japan. The goal of this organization is to help clean up after climbers who have left waste, such as empty oxygen tanks and food wrappings on Mount Everest. Additionally, they promote youth engagement in sustainability projects and apple tree plantings to increase wealth in areas surrounding the mountain. Junko Tabe established the Himalayan Adventure Trust of Japan in 1990 as an extension of the Himalayan Adventure Trust founded by Sir Edmund Hillary to clean up Everest. After the establishment, she was the director of the group and worked to gather many more members, with the total now surpassing 1,400 people. The necessity of these groups is evident from the increasing rates of environmental degradation due to the novelty of Everest. According to National Geographic author Mark Jenkins, the two standard routes, the Northeast Ridge and Southeast Ridge, are not only dangerously crowded, but also disgustingly polluted, with garbage leaking out of the glaciers and pyramids of human excrement filled in the camps. This mistreatment of the mountain has destroyed the natural beauty Junko Tabe has described upon her summit. Realizing the issues arising, she took charge and has sparked a revolution of change on an issue that is still being solved today. Overall, Junko Tabe conquered barriers set up in her time, not only financially, but also socially. She established a new kind of opportunity for women in Japan and all around the world. Mountaineers today are still impacted by her vast accomplishments, and her legacy as a strong, powerful, and passionate mother and climber will live on.